yeah hope you guys are able to hear me and see my screen as well so today part of today's agenda what we will discuss is let me take you to the agenda first before we move forward today we will discuss the multi org structure okay so we will look at the overview and the change compared to the EBS about the multi org structure and we will get into the details or at a detail level when we discuss this part of the class and we will discuss about the look and feel of the application okay and then we will discuss about the role based access control I'll say simply role based access control and what are the roles available and how role based access controllers taking a big leap in the fusion applications that we will discuss okay so these are mainly few things and other than that we will discuss about the rest of the other things as well so let me take you through the presentation here okay so I hope you are all able to see my screen so part of the enterprise structure okay <clears throat> here I think you are able to see the enterprise structure here so this is the enterprise structure in fusion applications and we've got some changes when you compare it with the EBS R12 so here part of the enterprise structure so we used to start with business group okay in case of EBS but here we've got enterprise as the the top entity of our business okay so the way we used to define business group here we will have to define enterprise it is a mandatory setup okay so which stands as a top entity of our business okay and then we'll have a division coming into the picture okay let me take it into one excel file Place or org structure, let's say. So, here when I say enterprise, okay, I'll take an example of okay, it's data group of components. And then the division comes into the picture so division is nothing but a subdivision of the business okay so this is an optional feature where you will bifurcate their business let's say Tata is into multiple manufacturing and multiple businesses right so here you can say it's IT is one of the division and the manufacturing is one of the division and whatever is there other businesses that you can divide or else if you would like to have a region wise a region wise bifurcation you can also do it let's take the examples here okay i will say Tata asia and Tata America 
or is it who is the data Australia so like that you can make the subdivisions of a business okay and or else you can also do a bifurcation between their businesses like you know it can be an IT IT division for example say consultancy services let's say I'll say TCS which is an IT division or and they are into motors right so Tata Motors so like this you can divide okay any of your business subdivisions okay below the enterprise that is what your division okay and this is an optional feature so it is not a mandatory it's an additional feature along with the regular enterprise so that is what the division and next we have primary ledger legal entity are the same one and the same with the EBS so the way we had primary ledger legal entity here also we have same way of operating it here and there there are some small functionality changes when it is operating unit of our EBS structure we are no more calling it as operating unit it is business unit okay so I'll say now primary ledger and legal entity and we have business unit okay so it is nothing but your operating units okay where you would like to have the business is being operated an operating unit so that is what your business unit here okay so the business unit has a lot of extended functionalities here in fusion applications okay where when business unit is used to get defined in EBS okay that means operating use unit is get used to define we did not have any business functionalities or what is that the businesses or the work that we used to do so there was no option to choose that business function but here we are can choose them okay let's say we can have a positioning business unit You can say procurement business unit and you can use business unit for material management you can use business unit for sales which is for order entry and again for payable invoice and receivable invoice so like this you can choose the business functions to be enabled for a business unit so that is the beauty here okay let's say one of my operating unit or a business unit I would only like to enable requisition because that particular BU is not authorized to create any purchase orders and instead of that one of the business unit would act as a service provider business unit and create purchase orders on behalf of that business unit okay so this way I can create or I can make a shared service provider model okay with the by default enablement of the setup okay so I don't need to do any customizations or anything because I have that particular feature available by default okay. so this way you can be able to define business units okay and the next to it is we have departments is also one of the new feature or an additional feature or an optional feature where you can be able to track the employees based on the department let's say department can be sales department manufacturing department okay 
so IT department so like that you can have the departments being defined and also associated to your structure okay and below which you have inventory of so inventory of is again the same inventory of okay what we used to define okay there are some changes here and there in the inventory of and item master organization and its definition so that we will detail discuss in detail when we get into that classes okay and below which you can have sub inventory so the same way how we have in EBS. okay so like this we have multi org structure in fusion applications and these are the differences compared to the EBS, uh, EBS and multi org structure any questions here so is this clear not clear are you getting not getting Uh, division can you uh, explain a little bit on it because I see mm -hmm. uh, you have given an example like uh, based on region mm -hmm. or the country right Tata Asia Tata US right like that right I mean uh, what is the need mm -hmm. uh, when it compare, when we compare with R12 what is the need that we need this because the legal entity itself has to deal with many things right and still division then why it has come into cloud like this so that is how it has become an optional feature or a additional feature okay if you would like yeah, to draw uh, mm -hmm. you have to use it right in, in case mm -hmm. um, there could be some scenario where mm -hmm. business uh, uh, when we implement something the business will definitely need that we don't know really where exactly we need to fit this division how correct so here this is exactly where it comes is it is a subdivision of your business okay so whether you would like to use it or don't use it it is up to you but only the thing what you can do with the division is you can have a subdivision of the business okay it can be any subdivision let's say it's a region wise or your product line wise or else even any other thing below to the enterprise Okay. okay, so is it uh, associated to the legal entity? Yeah, it is associated to the legal entity. Okay, mm -hmm. so legal entity is also associated. But when you would like to define divisions or you want to make them part of your enterprise structure, so the way you will have to define the multi arc structure is different other than the regular way of definition. So that we will discuss when we get into the definition of multi act structure and I will also show you some of the pictures where you will clearly understand okay with the which are uh, showing how that particular enterprise structure reflects so that you use uh, and, uh, will, you, uh, will you demonstrate us in the system as to how the structure is defined yeah yeah okay. we will take you through that okay that is how you have your multi arc structure so let us move forward so there are some of the key terminologies and functionalities which has been adapted from few of the applications okay so here we can see and understand okay fusion versus cbs versus people soft so when i say it as enterprise in fusion applications so it was like an ultimate legal entity or a business group in our ebs and it is a company in people soft okay so division was not there in both of them so division is a new concept and business unit was the operating unit okay we used to call business unit only in people soft and here department is an HR organization in our EBS suit and a department was a department in people soft okay the department activity what we are doing is a much beyond than the HR organization activities which we have done. So it's not only a HR organization which actually got HR or employees associated, but it has got even more functionalities to it. 
and a legal entity is a legal entity and company in PeopleSoft. So reference data sets is a whole together new concept which has been acquired from PeopleSoft where you can link all your setup entities with the reference data sets that you define and associate with. Yeah. Department uh, is optional, right? Yeah, yeah, department is also optional. Yeah. Okay, so reference data set is a set ID of PeopleSoft. So now it is one of the key features of people that are fusion applications where you can reference the data whether to show it or to use it within a business unit or across the business unit or at the enterprise level okay how do you would like to use that reference data set by referencing your setup information whichever you define whether you would like to use it across the enterprise which is applicable or available for all the business units or you would only restrict to a specific business unit. So that is how we have a reference data set controlling the setup and its sharing security. So that we will discuss in detail. Okay, I'll move on. Okay. So this was what the look and feel of Fusion applications, I think uh, most of you might have already seen. So where you will have a navigator once you log in, which will give you the list of tasks that you can perform based on the roles that are associated to you and the roles which will give you privileges to work on anything. And we will discuss what that roles and privileges are in the coming slides. And then you have all these setup if it is a setup or if it is a transaction that you're going to do it is all from your navigator and you can also be able to find these call tasks from your home screen okay which is the next slide okay so this is what your home screen and the icons which you are able to find is are your springboard icons we call it as a springboard okay so the, these are nothing but again the privileges are the tasks that you've got with your role and you would be able to perform these activities so all these are inherited based on the role and the privileges associated to you so that's how a role is crucial here and for everything and anything you need a role that needs to get, get associated and then only you will be able to access the application so each of this particular box with the name represents certain roles and privileges to you okay based on which you will get into that particular form and you will be able to do that setup or transaction okay and with on the left hand side you will be able to see a social or social connect so we are calling it as OSN Oracle social networking by which you will be able to find yourself along with the other employees of the enterprise and you will be able to create conversations based on the tasks that you're performing and you can involve people and you can take their views take their inputs and you can suggest them okay and you can be able to have more clarity and vision on what is that the task that you're performing okay so for an example if you are have some some questions or need some clarity okay based on some payable invoice approval or let's say purchase order approval you will just take that particular purchase order okay from there you can create a conversation and you can involve the people whoever can give you that information so that they automatically gets notified once the conversation is created and they can be able to find your concerns and can give their inputs on that and you will be able to be in a position to again get them back through a notification and then you can be able to understand that the whatever is needed on that so that's how 
this is one of the beauty of our fusion applications okay the osn so by default whoever is the person gets created in the fusion application you will get osn being associated automatically okay you don't need any privileges for that let's move on so one of the page where you can find a supply creation so as we are having no more forms it is completely the adf pages so we will only deal with the adf pages here so one of the setup that you can be able to see is supply creation and we've got here and there some of the changes when you compare it with the definition of ebs so that we will get into it elaboratively and understand where is that differences that we have and what is that the improvements that we've got when you compare it with pbs in each of the setup that we will do and we will go through each of it comparing with our ebs practice okay and then this is the purchase order creation okay and then this is sales order creation page so like this you have each of the task or a transaction that can be performed now okay, and in a very new way so we'll take that so any questions till now so let's get into the role based access control okay rbac which is nothing but the role based access control okay the key driven factor of any privilege or any role okay it's completely controlled by role based access control so what is that the role based access control is consists of now that we are going to see it. so there are some multiple roles that we have okay so which would administer the privileges what the user is going to have based on its association to the user and which will govern what the user is going to access or set up or what he is going to do. okay all that is governed by the uh, role which is associated to the person so now let's get into the types of roles here which are job role duty role data role and abstract role we will get into an excel file and understand clearly what is that this roles are all about i'll say roles job role duty role data role and abstract role okay these are the four roles okay part of the fusion role based access control so for each of the release okay currently we are in release 12 and release 13 is also going to arrive so each of the release, so we have got some of the changes from uh, uh, release wise perspective, okay, in role based access control. So previously in release 11, we had APM and IDM, Authorization Policy Manager and Oracle Identity Manager, okay, where we used to define the roles and we used to associate it to the persons, but now we are all doing that definition part of security console okay so that how we will do it so we'll show you in this respective classes but here we will understand in detail what all these rules are okay a job role let's take an example of procurement manager
okay and what are the duties to it duty role is nothing but the duties of a job role for example what duties you will have for a procurement manager let's say purchase order administration okay and then purchase agreement administration and then requisition line processing and what else can a procurement manager do tell me so all the all those are nothing but the duties okay so here let us try to understand the two things here a job role for an example procurement manager is nothing without the duty roles which are associated to a procurement manager job role okay so by which you will be able to in a position to understand a procurement manager or a job role is nothing without the privileges or the duties if they are not associated like purchase order administration purchase agreement administration and requisition line processing etc 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 all those are duty roles that are associated or duties or privileges that are associated okay if they are associated then only a job role gets the authority or a privilege to access these things okay otherwise without a duty or a duty role there is no job role which is going to get the privileges okay so that's how we've got this two types of roles so any questions here no questions no raj yeah so here for an example i would like to customize these duties or do some changes okay where my procurement manager should be able to having or should should have the administration to purchase orders but he should only be having a view access to my purchase agreements okay so can i do that i can be able to do it what i'll do is i'll remove this particular duty and i'll add purchase agreement view so for every access we have the duties or privileges available by default in the system so all you need to do is you need to search and associate it with the duty row and which gets associated to the job row this way i can be able to customize or create roles as per my requirement and which is endless so that's how you can be able to drive the duty and which is associated to the job okay that is what your job role and duty role the next role is data role okay so what is data okay you've got a job role and duty role associated but which has got no restriction okay no restriction means what i have given my employee the access of procurement manager which has got duties or duty role associated of purchase order administration purchase agreement administration requisition line processing and blah 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 so which has got a lot of privileges associated to it. but i would like to restrict him to access only one data or one set of data which is specified or bifurcated by the business unit okay so that means or therefore i would like my user to access only the us procurement data not anything else okay so that's how i will associate my 
user a role which has got context of the us data i'll say us b okay now my procurement manager only be able to access the us procurement data not anything else because i would like the users to restrict or to only look at their activities in which field they are not anything else that's how i'll control my security or i'll draw a line between my business units employees to access their activities and have a security and no breach okay. yeah this dot data role i see is uh, more like r12 uh, operating units profile option uh, the, the transaction that we perform a specific to operating unit are based on the profile option so here we are calling the data role right yes but we've got much more than that okay it's not simply the profile option which actually gives him the access to a specific business unit but we've got a lot more support. the security is more enhanced okay so that's more how, yeah it's, it has got more features than that okay similar mm -hmm. to what you have told but has got more to do with that so right. that's how we will give the access to a business unit specific business unit so that is your third row where you will associate a data role to your user so who will have got access to only specific data in which he is working or when which he is supposed to access not all okay that is how we have got the third role because we will only be associating the data roles guys not any free roles like our job role which has got all the duties we will not do that we will only assign the data roles specific to their bu so but in till release 11 we had data roles being generated automatically based on the business unit creation or ledger creation okay but here we did not have that functionality in release 12 we don't have that data roles generation anymore but we have got some different way of doing it so we will give the security data context okay that security context we will associate with the business unit or the inventory organization or the ledger whatever is your security data context that we will associate it okay so that is how we'll access a data role and give access to a set of data to the user right and then you have an abstract role which is kind of a seeded or a symbolic role which has got some privileges or a default privileges for an example we'll have employee buyer so like this we've got some of the seeded roles or very few are available so those are nothing but your abstract roles okay. so this has also got some of the privileges for an example an employee if you associate he will get access to your schedule process okay and yes employment details that whatever is his profile that he can look up to so there are some of the privileges that are also got associated <coughs> with the employee role which is an abstract role and for a buyer and again what a buyer can do like purchase order creation and maybe it's approval and whatever activities that he can do those are some of the privileges associated with the buyer role that's how these are some seeded roles okay or uh, roles that are abstract roles so four types of roles that we have and you've got any questions in this uh Raj, just just one thing uh, so this job role is it the job role defined into hrms itself i mean does it flow in from the hrms no it, it does not flow from H hrms so this will be the job roles created differently okay, okay there are all the job roles are available okay which are relevant for each of the functionality that we perform 
okay what we will do is we will assign or disassign some of the privileges or duties whichever is not needed but all the job roles whatever are needed for us to do the setups or transactions yeah. in the future instance yeah. we've got all that being already created security console is an application which administer all these roles not hrms okay yeah got you thank you uh, raj mm -hmm. one more thing yeah employee employee role also will create from the a security role or from the hrms this is a seeded role it yeah. is it is a seeded role it is by default you will have this particular role available so this will not get created and all the roles guys no there's no hrms comes into the picture here okay for creating any roles or if it is any other application does not come into the picture it is only the security console which can create the new roles other than the existing job roles or administer the existing job, uh, job roles whatever are existing and this its assignment and the assignment all that you can be able to administer with security console okay uh, raj one question here can yes. a person having a multiple job role yeah definitely why not a person can be a procurement manager okay and can also be a supplier manager because he also has the privilege to administer the supplier and he can also have a category manager role just let me take you through one of the slide which will give you answer to it so now you can be able to see it here right the person whoever is sitting here he is a procurement manager category manager and also sometimes a warehouse manager okay these are all job roles which has got relevant duty roles associated to it which has got some privileges and they are obviously be restricted to some set of data let's say if it is procurement manager he would access the us procurement data and if it is category manager category manager has got access to the sourcing activities like your negotiations creation rfus creation so that is also to a specific view and if it is warehouse manager he will also got some of the inventory access to the relevant inventories available under us business units that's how a person can have multiple job roles okay and he will perform all that jobs uh, i'm sorry uh, is it related to only specific ou or any other ou business unit sorry i did not get that question See, for example this particular person is assigned for uh, bangalore mm -hmm. so it may, he may be also a uh, manager in hyderabad okay. is it like this yeah you can have you can have him if you want to give him the access for multiple business units you can give it okay that again depends depends on your business structure or enterprise structure how you operate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. we will assign two roles over there yeah other staff other way right so we will only associate the data role to give the access to him okay, okay. how many ever data roles got access the relevant or the different roles will give him that different accesses okay so go. job duty uh, job duty under one job role would be same across the full enterprise or i would say under full uh, and a full across the company if i have a procurement manager mm -hmm. the job duty is under that procurement manager would be the same or we can uh, we can exclude include depend on the uh, department or something yeah again that is again uh, based on the requirement you can personalize the, the the role or the by default available job role whatever is there but if you would like to make any changes or personalize according to your requirement you can be able to do it but otherwise a job role is again same to all the departments or across the enterprise thank you So across the business where you start it is possible see that is what i'm saying here a job role a plain job role is what okay has got some duties okay right. when i say a procurement manager role okay yeah. so which has got these are the duties available 
if at all they are not restricted by a data a procurement manager can access all that business units whatever is available but fusion security or role based access control does not allow in such a way okay he must have a access to or all the entities okay, okay. so he should only specific he should be specific in accessing specific data if you would like him to access multiple business units then assign multiple business units data which will give him respectively to that particular specific business units but if you give him a specific job role that will not allow or give him access of all the business units it is you will have to specifically go to that particular data and give access and then save and then come out that will give him the access yep. okay uh, so so raj that means uh, uh, like without duty role it is nothing uh, nothing for booker uh, job role so yeah. similar uh, similar the case for data role as well right right absolutely right so let's move on so there are some specific data securities here okay part of your procurement uh, activities okay you've got a procurement agent being created okay this is one of the setup the way how we have a buyer setup available so we have procurement agent is the same setup but it has got again a very improved way so you've got a lot of new functionalities enabled within the procurement agent you can give an access to other agents documents to view or to administer okay so like your purchase orders requisitions agreements negotiations and supplier related stuff all that so that you will define it the access in the procurement agent setup okay so this is one more layer of security other than the roles and the them being roles being associated to the person you also need to have a procurement agent access for creating the documents like purchase orders and administering them okay so here this is some of the uh, documents and the, the procurement agent can be able to access them provided based on the request is being given or enabled okay he can manage requisitions manage purchase orders and manage catalog content manage suppliers manage approved supplier list entries spend analysis and supplier qualification so i'll move to the next slide where you will better understand this this procurement agent setup so now you can you can see it here when i define a procurement agent i would define the access to him where he will access to the other agents documents look at whether if there are the requisitions whether he can be able to get a few access or a full access or none whether it is completely allowed to him or not if i okay deselect or not check this particular checkbox he will not be getting any access to the other procurement agents requisitions which are created and in case of purchase orders again the same whether it is view full or none so like this you can set up or you can ensure that there is a one more layer of security in accessing the the documents which are created by the other agents okay so thus this procurement agent setup is one of the mandatory setup for you to complete your procurement activities any questions here the setup will be given like by uh, cisco administrator uh, uh, come again yeah, yeah. this setup will be uh, that means these roles to be assigned to the particular manager like this is another setup to be given by system administrator generally in uh, ebs like this any so in, in ebs yeah system administrator will have all that privileges to assign the roles but here let's say the procurement manager we will actually have an implementation consultant or an implementation manager who will administer the project 
the implementation project. We will, will create that implementation project in the next classes. He will actually associate the roles. Okay, he has got the entire privilege in creating or defining the setups or associating the roles, or creating the new new roles and then associating. So who will actually create the procurement agents? Okay, so he so will. Raj, this, is, uh, this comes under the functional security manager uh, yesterday we discussed. Yeah, it is part of FSM, right? So in FSM, and, uh, this is an FSM setup. Just trying to compare. This is like you know our document type in R12. Purchasing document types. Right, right. In purchasing documents type, how we have uh, owner can view, owner can approve. There are some check boxes, right? But here, also along with that, you will also administer the other agents' documents. That is what, mm -hmm. again, an additional feature. Along with an individual uh, access, he will also be able to administer, or the project implementation manager can also be administering whether the person or a procurement agent supposed to be accessing the other agents' documents, if yes, up to what level it is, whether it is view or full access. And can we assume that procurement agent access is a role and rest of the uh, things are the duties for that role? No, no, this, this is not a role. These are not duties. This is a specific setup. Okay, but which also is one of the type of security, one of the layer you can think it as one of the layer when it comes to procurement. Okay. Okay, so let's move further. So this is uh, some of the deployment environments. So for each of the okay implementation that is going on. So generally you will have two of the instances. One is your test environment or a stage environment and the other is a production but based on the request you can have multiple even more instances than this also based on your case scenario but as an initial implementation went on so these are the two instances that were there and mostly being used so one is testing where you will set up all that and testing test the data and then you will move to the production so that is how the environments we have in the procurement cloud procurement or SCM infusion cloud so in case of your non-production cloud environment okay you can be able to set up your data and you can be able to conduct your trainings and then you can apply or any configurations prior to the migrations it is kind of an all trial and error that you can be able to perform and you will be only moving that particular validated setups to the production which is finally you're going to use so this particular test environment can be re refreshed as per the request as complete maintenance would be handled by the oracle itself so you can be able to request if at all any refreshes are needed okay even we might also have seen our demo instances being refreshed based on a Okay, scheduled timelines. So this way, if it is your own live instance, you can request for the refresh or any other activities, okay, based on the requirement. So if it is the production environment, the production environment here, you are sized for production user loads. And here also you've got some monthly maintenances, okay, so to give you the best features based on the new releases okay like you know if you are in release 12 so based on the regular maintenance activities you can get up onto the next features the way how we have got a mobile application or system is getting updated let's say a new os or new features whichever is getting created or updated based on a scheduled maintenance you get a notification right for your mobile if it is an ios or if it is any other os so based on that so the same way similarly we've got some of the maintenance activities and the service provider owns it completely you need not to do anything and 
within that particular maintenance you will also have the latest features being adapted by your system okay whichever is scheduled in that particular time and now we will discuss some of the roles which are relevant for us to set up our enterprise okay we've got application implementation manager and application implementation consultant these are the setup roles so typically this particular roles will have got managing the implementation projects and then setting up the implementation projects and the functional user roles are typically your transactional loans the role roles which are like your procurement manager or supplier manager or category manager so that is again they are the user roles okay not the super user or setup user roles so we'll get into each of this and understand now we'll move forward okay. so let's take an example or we'll discuss about application implementation manager overall implementation of the cloud application okay whatever is your cloud within which if you are implementing you will know the offerings and you will configure the offerings you will generate the list of setup tasks okay what is that the tasks that can be performed within an offering and in that what are mandatory tasks what are non mandatory tasks that list of tasks that you can generate it from an implementation offering part of the implementation project and you can monitor the project let's say if you have multiple projects okay multiple implementation projects you can be able to monitor what is the progress of that particular projects and where are they currently and what is their deadlines and how many tasks that are completed and how many that are due let's say by this month and then how many that are yet not started which are overdue so that way you can be able to administer the entire project by looking at the monitor okay monitor progress so this options are all are available for your implementation manager okay so that is your application implementation manager role and next you have an application implementation consultant so this role fulfills the complete implementation that means it can set up anything okay and everything part of your uh, offerings whichever is associated to your project okay let's say for an example i've got some of the financials and supply chain related offerings which are getting implemented in this particular phase okay so i'll associate financials and part of supply chain i'll associate procurement offering and i'll associate material management and logistics and i'll also associate the cost management and then i'll associate order management so these are all offerings guys when i say offerings don't get confused they are nothing but the modules okay so when it comes to cloud we are calling it as offerings but in evs we used to call them as modules okay so once i associate those particular offerings to my implementation project my implementation consultant can set up anything out of those particular offerings which are associated in the project so this is kind of a crucial role which can set up any data or anything out of those particular offerings so when you get into this particular phases so in the plan stage you will know the offerings and configure and when you are implementing it you will collect the data and enter the setup data and when you are deploying it what is that the setups that needs to be deployed that means out of whatever that you have done whichever is important or all that setup what you have done it in the testing you will move it to the production okay in the deploy phase so these are unlike the project phases that we are now following because as we know that the project implementation time has been completely reduced we are no more doing that years and years of implementation anymore okay 
So you will have simply phases like this where you plan, where you implement and you completely deploy it. Okay, so each of this particular phase would have got these particular tasks or the activities would be done by your implementation consultant. Okay, so where you will do all of this in this particular phases. So any questions here? Uh, Raj, just uh, a question which might be a little out of context here. I could see the testing phase here as well. Uh, just had a curiosity uh, for R12 and all in EPS, we have OATS and some, some other tools as well, but OATS is the general tool that we use for uh, testing the Java-based forms. So for these ADFs, uh, has OATS been upscaled or like uh, are there any other tools in the market? Like you can, you can integrate with any other tool here. So integration is like a cakewalk. Okay, it, it okay. can be words or it can be any other testing tool. It can be Panaya or it can be, you know, the ALM, whatever it can be. So you can simply do an integration and have your own test scripts which will execute and then give you the results. So that, that integration is very much convenient. There's, there's no uh, issues with that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Then the functional owners here, they will collect the data and enter the setup data and test and verify import. Okay, so this is mostly like your okay user roles. So who will actually do the transactions? And you can briefly understand the phases, the, the three phases, okay, part of your implementation project where you plan whatever is that offerings that you're going to implement part of it and you will generate the setup and task list. How do you generate it? That we will see it when we define an implementation project in the further classes and then customize the setup tasks. So we will do it only if it is optional. Okay, you will whenever it is required and then you will collect the data and enter the setup data and test. Then you will deploy it into the production environment once they are validated with the export and import process from the test environment and if at all it is from legacy system as again you will do it through interfaces so that particular flexibilities are available okay so you can also understand this application implementation life cycle okay so like this the way we have discussed just now these are again similar to that plan configure implement export okay here export or import has got something new to understand where you can import the data from your text no, sorry test instance to production okay through a configuration package where you can be able to take the data that is already configured in your test environment and through a configuration file you can directly move it to the production instance that actually eliminates all your re setting up of the instance and then loading of the data okay up to some extent so that is kind of an easy process okay how do you do that we will also discuss through a configuration package okay i'll move forward this is some of the uh, minimum requirements uh, for your machine to have in case or when you're say, using the fusion applications Okay, although it is not that much mandatory to know. So the strategy here, so how we can be able to have fusion applications on a middleware. These are all set up on a middleware layer and beneath that you have database and the database is on an operating system, whatever is your operating system on which it's, it sits and you have a virtual machine. You can have a virtual machine controlling all this uh, you know about to virtual machines and you have a server and which has got storage like this you will have a complete package or a solution being given by your cloud okay which can be leveraged without doing any process or tasks or set of activities that we used to do when we are setting up uh, on premise okay so this is what the strategy of 
Fusion Cloud here.